Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another video from Peter Phelps 3D. This is Peter Phelps. So today what I'm going to go over is a little experiment. I've been working on this Mandalorian helmet, and I, I spent hours sanding this thing. It's, I went from 80 to 120 to 180 to 220, and yet you can still clearly see layer lines once I did the primer stage. I mean, it's still very evident. I'm going to have to probably go over this several times, to do the whole rinse and repeat on the primer, and maybe try to get some fill primer to actually smooth this out enough that then I can do the chrome on it. This is printed at 110%, and I had to you know, weld pieces together, basically. Some of the folks were saying use the uh, wood filler. Well, when you sand the wood filler, and if you don't have a shop and an air blower or something to get rid of it, yeah, I tried washing it off and it just turned the stuff back into putty and some of the f stuff fell back out. So that was a fun little issue. But so what we're going to try to do today is we're going to try to see whether or not we can use resin from one of our DLP type printers or SLA type printers. This is Monoprice Rapid Black. Now, that is such a misnomer because this stuff didn't ever work well on my longer orange tin resin printer. Um, and my experiments with it showed that it took like 40 seconds for it to actually harden. So this has been sitting here. So we're going to try that. A little paintbrush. I'm just going to use a little Dixie cup. And then I've got this Mark 1 Iron Man helmet. Uh, well, it's going to end up being more of a mask because I don't have the back part. And I've cut, had issues where I had to cut it up into three parts because it, it failed on this one here. And then just wouldn't start printing again on this last piece. So those are actually separate parts that I've super glued together and then used a uh, soldering iron to weld it. So we'll weld the parts together and smooth out what I could. But we're going to try to see, because this is at 0 .30 uh, millimeter layer heights, and we're just going to see if we can use this resin to smooth everything out and of course you're going to need something to cure the resin once it's put on this is my UV light I use it for the post processing on most of my resin prints so I'm going to switch over and we're going to try to do a time lapse of my painting this so you're not spending forever watching me paint it <laughs> And I'm going to put down some uh, newspaper too, just so if I get a little sloppy, I don't get anything on my surface here. All right, see you in a little bit. So, one additional note before I start all of this uh, make sure that you're in a well ventilated area. I just opened my door up and made sure the bathroom windows open and put a fan on I'll be wearing this uh, this was a modified uh, mask so it's using an in uh, HEPA filter from one of the little iRobots I have this design on Thingiverse but it, it works pretty well as a uh, ventilator or mask so it will filter out the gases hopefully because 
this is pretty strong stuff when you smell in the resin and I'm going to use a pair of gloves just to keep my hands clean hopefully but yeah make sure you, you you're not breathing this stuff directly and um, take some precautions if you're trying this all right thank you and off to the show So all right, we got it kind of covered, and I'm still wearing my mask, and you might not even be able to hear me. I had several people say they couldn't understand me when I talked to this, through the thing, so I'm gonna take it off for a sec. That's better. Let's see. And so now we're gonna. Now, th this is another complaint I had of about this resin color the pigment used doesn't seem to really stay in the suspension or whatever you want to call it the, the actual resin it just kind of bleeds out now what I did is I switched out took the newspaper out and switched over to a piece of glass here in the hopes that the resin that's on the bottom or the, that's continuing to move off of this and drip out because it's really thin it doesn't stick to the glass hopefully if that's at least my principle so now I'm gonna hit it with my UV light and try to cure it oh I can hear are cracking already. I hope it doesn't break this. <laughs> this is a very long print. If it all of a sudden breaks off because the resin's hardening, I'll be upset. <laughs> Like I said, this stuff takes about 40 seconds to cure, so I'm going to go over this several times in different directions. I know, this is boring, right? I could time lapse this too. But I wanted to see what would happen. more crack sounds so maybe that's good looks like a bubble there
hear any more crack sounds. That's good. So what I'm hoping is I'll be able to to primer this without having to do any other type of smoothing process. I'm going to hit this with more of this, probably turn it over and hit it with this because some of it dripped down inside. And I'll get back to you when I've primered it. We'll see what happens. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and this is the result from doing the resin 3D printing on top of before doing the uh, primer stage. Now, you almost can't see any of the lines, except for right up at the top where they're thicker. I just see them on this. They stepped more, but everything else is pretty much nice and smooth and almost shiny from the bot from the uh, previous layer. So I think that is definitely something I'm going to be doing more of. I think it's a little bit of layers where they got kind of thin over in the sides here. But otherwise it's a whole lot less work, I think. So I'm definitely going with that. And I'll be probably spray painting the silver and just putting it up as sort of a display piece. But yeah, I, I like the results of that a lot better than the results I got when I was sanding on the uh, Mandalorian mask or helmet. So. I might even do this to the Mandalorian helmet if it sticks. So, you might want to try that too. Thank you for watching and take care.